Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hawkeye Traders. My name is Randy Lindsay, host of today's live presentation. I'm here to educate and inform you on the proper use of Hawkeye tools on the live edge of the market. If you have any questions during this presentation, over on the right-hand side of your GoToWebinar control panel is a questions pane. Please enter your questions or comments there, and I'll be more than glad to get to them in the order that they're received. If there's anyone here that has, does not have Hawkeye or are you brand new, uh, if you have those specific brand new questions, that's what we're here for. If you need to see Hawkeye demonstrated on any of the three platforms I have available, NinjaTrader, TradeStation, or MetaTrader 4, just ask and let me know. I'll be more than glad to uh, pop up the display and show it to you. Any of the indicators as well, I'll be more than glad to demonstrate that for you today. That's what I'm here for. In the meantime, uh, about halfway through today's presentation, I'm going to make you an offer. For everyone who is here in my room, I make a very special price offer to get you started with Hawkeye. Instead of paying the uh, normal price for our indicators, because you're in my webinar today, I will give you an opportunity to purchase our Hawkeye Volume Starter Package at a very attractive price. So um, hang on for that about halfway through today's presentation. Just make sure that everyone here knows we are here for educational purposes only. That anything I do say uh, should only be construed as education and not trading advice because we are not registered trading advisors. Make sure you use common sense when you're trading. Make sure you get advice from a competent financial advisor before investing money in any of, of these financial markets. We are not registered trading advisors. We may hold positions in stocks or currencies or other markets that we discuss here today. Make sure you understand that ahead of time. Also, make sure that uh, you understand the risks because there are potentially large risks in, involved in trading futures, stocks, forks, uh, and uh, options. There's also a large potential for reward, but you must be aware of the risks involved and be willing to accept them in order to invest in any of these markets. Uh, let's see, past performance does not indicate future results and make sure that you understand these things before you proceed. Make sure you understand all that. So let me get that out of the way. And I want to begin today's presentation. Someone wanted me to, Mike, I believe, wanted me to go over and look at the, uh, the pound. Uh, he also wanted me to look at the specifically the pound dollar the futures contract for that. So let me look at the uh, 6B for that matter. And I'll pop that up real quick. I've got it already set up over here. All right, Mike, there's the, uh, the BP, the futures contract, the uh, British pound US dollar futures contract. It's currently on the June front month contract. What we're looking at, uh, Hawkeye is showing us using a three time frame integration, which at Hawkeye we always do that. We always look at three different time frames. If you look at the basis of it, then we can go over here to the volume itself. And if we were to pull up, these are just the currencies themselves. So if let's put the pound US dollar itself, then you can see the what volume is telling us leading up into this. You can see on a 60 minute time frame, which is a very key to this, that uh, you could see back in uh, the uh, exhaustion phase, you know, where you saw a lot of selling action, and then you can see the tenor of volume changing color here. Notice the the amount of exhaustion coming in at this point, and then you can see the amount. Uh, here's another exhaustion bar, but in this case, was that exhaustion was that building? You could definitely see this was exhaustion because of the change in tenor. Here you also can see a very good change in tenor, but volume won't continue to go down. Price will not continue to go down on low volume. Notice the very low price range and a very low volume bar. Then you can see selling continuing, but price going zero. Okay, so this is accumulation and distribution. Then you start to see accumulation forming as price is starting to slowly rise as we start to see volume rising. So anytime you start to see volume rising, okay, and price correspondingly rising, you know something is up. 
in this case, you can see that there's quite a bit of volatility starting to come into this market. Then as you see this volume surge coming up with price surging up into new relative highs, that's got to tell you something as well. Okay, prior to uh, yesterday's open, you can see coming into the 17th overnight, and then here is the uh, London open right in here. You can see quite a bit of volume building up into that, and you don't see a lot of, uh, of, of sellers even attempting to that. You see an attempted sell-off here at, uh, I guess this is referred to as the, the fix. Is that right? That's basically when... Uh, the London session goes to lunch and you can see a lot of programmatic trading coming in, but a lot of news came out here. And I think this was when the news came out about the um, snap election. So obviously the markets are, were responding considerably, initially selling off. But right here you can see huge amount of buying volume coming in. Price extension on buying volume indicates a very sharp price redirection. Okay. You understand that when, if you had volume on your side, even on an hourly time frame, you saw ahead of time that this was a huge bullish bar. And understanding Hawkeye at this point gives you a, a, a clear advantage. Even if you're trading spot Forex where people say, eh, there's no volume in Forex. Uh, that's just a bunch of hogwash because we know there is. And if you know how to take advantage of volume in the market, then you see this coming. And in this case, even after the news event occurred, you can you could see this coming one hour ahead of the real price action that followed. Okay, so you can see a, a lot of buying coming into this attractive price level. Price came down to where we saw prior support and resistance and accumulation starting so based on that price action surge and we see one two three four five six seven eight more hours of price acceleration up into that okay now this is starting to tell us something that as this price is increasing looking at the re relationship of the volume bars and the price bars themselves then we can see as volume increases as price increases volume is starting to decrease until you start to see another exhaustion bar when you can see price rallying up into new prices and then all the buyers go away all the sellers sellers become aggressive and then you see a change in the volume profile and you can see price going flat showing this is clearly the exhaustion bar you can see accumulation and distribution already starting to take place because white, green, red, green, white, green, red, green, clear indication of volume accumulation and distribution occurring. Where it's going to go from here, it's a little bit uncertain, but at this point, we see we are in a congestion channel. We know our six ways the market moves because we teach this to you every single week and you know how to apply it. So the volume module that we um, are putting on special today shows you this just based on volume only you can see how that's done now let's look at this same instrument uh, on the tools to see exactly how or when it could have been traded here is the same 60 minute chart where we are looking at the Hawkeye zones and the trend and you can see that based upon that sell-off the failed sell-off basically remember this was the exhaustion bar I told you that was posted earlier that exhaustion bar came into a known region of demand. This is where buyers typically start coming in. And when you see a lack of sellers in a market, you know that the direction of price is going to change. So, and then there we have it. And then you can see the price at, at the announcement of the news. Where did it rally down to? Right into a prior region of demand. This is clear support showing a, a change in, in um, direction is coming okay uh, were you using hawkeye to trade this even on a three minute time frame um then um looking at the the news intraday okay you can see that based upon the the sell-off that we saw down into the news prior to and then the re recurring buying that came from that okay so the london market opened 
sell-off news and then the buy, resulting buying coming from that you can see that there is a very clear indication on Hawkeye exactly how to trade that when to trade it and when to get out okay so these are the tools that are here to help you to see not only the uh, direction of the market, but also when to enter and when to exit. All right, now we're, we simply are just in the 60 minute congestion trading phase. So right now there's not any uh, particular trade setups because we're still clearly congested, but we're waiting for longer term direction to identify that. So Mike, I hope that helped a little bit. It is currently in an overbought situation right now, uh, but uh, based upon this, um, um, it might continue because it's got a very long consolidation range and it could continue. So the basis of volume is the important part. Okay. If you understand volume and apply that to your current rules, then you don't have to be trapped into uh, the traps that traditional traders fall into because you know a lot of times you see that between 70 to 80 percent of traders are failing because they're putting a lot of their emphasis on traditional strategies macd's and stochastics bollinger bands even l8 waves and things like that which give you ideas and look really really good in hindsight but volume really is the only leading indicator because it signals price movement before it happens it signals market intent by comparison all the other indicators are lagging because volume, when coupled with triple time frame, is the key. All right. I've learned a lot of lessons um, as I've evolved as a trader, um, a lot of lessons from my losses. I, I was introduced to Hawkeye uh, back in 2005, and I found out that trading with volume and price really was the answer. I found out about that and I saw that it started to change my entire view of trading. Like yourself, I came to one of these uh, presentations uh, at the time Nigel uh, was teaching that. I learned about the secrets of volume and I started applying them to my trading and I found the missing link I was always looking for. And that volume is the key. And I found a suite of software tools, the Hawkeye indicators, that were foundationally based on volume. And so based upon that volume, I then was able to understand that volume spread analysis, you know, the basics of uh, Wyckoff and the teachings were extremely good, but coupling that with price, volume spread analysis really doesn't consider the open, but Hawkeye considered it as very important. And it's you know, very similar to an auction process where the opening price sets the, the tone of the market. If the price opens at $100, the, the auctioneer goes out and says, do I get a bid for $100? Nobody asks for $100. He starts lowering the prices. Do I get a bid at $70? Do I get a bid at $50? Do I get a bid at $40? Then all of a sudden, someone holds a card up and says, yes, I'll take that at $40. Okay, so the market actually opened at $40. Even if it were a good market rally after that point, price will probably settle about 50, 60, maybe, maybe even $70 before the, the, the trading ends, before the auction process completes. Okay, so auction process, the price, the opening price sets the basis. If, however, the auctioneer opened up at 100 and someone said, I'll take it for 100, that sets the basis for that particular session. And the price could easily go up or down, but will generally go up and end at about 130, probably $140. So you can see there's a big price difference. Even though both sessions rallied into the open, the opening price set the basis for that. And that's the importance of understanding the opening principle when you are looking at volume spread analysis. So when you look at volume spread analysis, you're looking at the distribution of volume over any individual price bar, and you're coupling that with the open, high, low, and close of each of those price bars, and you are looking at average true range, pattern recognition, and standard deviation of price coupled together to give you what we refer to as volume price analysis. Now that is coupled into every one of the volume price bars, and you can see uh, the overall structure of the market. You know exactly how to place your trades, how to keep your profits, and protect you because volume 
is the key. Okay, over 300 calculations per bar go into our volume module. So um, here's a very quick example to show you how volume comes in. When you can see the opening of the market, a very large surge of volume followed by an active price. Um, usually at the opening of market, it usually occurs. But when you see these little signs like this right here, where volume starts coming up into a high, but you can see that there's no buying activity. When Hawkeye paints this as red, it indicates that buyers have stepped aside and aggressive sellers have entered the market. And then when Hawkeye paints a pivot on that bar, we're looking for at least three to five price bars coming through that. And when you start to see a series of those pivots in line without corresponding low pivots, then you know that the direction of this market is to the downside. So Hawkeye volume package is a key tool to help you to understand future price direction. Here we have it again, another pivot high, double top, and an increase of selling pressure coming into a very ex accelerated price. Okay, So we see volume radar is in, ex, ex, extremely important to help you to see the important volume that's starting to show itself in these markets. Okay, So volume really is the key. So um, I'm going to show a lot more live examples, but I want to make sure and give you guys an offer today to get your very own copy of Hawkeye Volume. If you go to the website, www.hawkeyetraders.com slash WED, let me put that in here for you and paste that into the chat room right there. Then you can get your very own copy for 97 bucks. One time fee, there's no subscription. No other recurring fees or anything else. You get access to the uh, the full volume module. The volume module, okay, includes all the indicators I just showed you. Hawkeye volume, the volume radar. You get the volume paint bar. You also get, as a bonus, the Hawkeye pivots and the Hawkeye wide bar. Okay, all of that is included in the uh, purchase of the uh, package. In addition, you get access to our exclusive members area, all of the online on-demand training and teaching, access to our members only Thursday training room, and you get a bonus two hour on-demand training course on how to use the volume and the volume only. We're not putting any of the other indicators on there. We're just showing you exactly how to use your new volume package. Okay, so that's the uh, one-time offer I'm giving you this morning. It is HawkeyeTraders.com slash WED. It's for our Wednesday class and a special we have just for people that attend my class this morning. All right, so volume is the most important part. And if you integrate that into whatever you're doing, then you will find that volume signals the intent and direction of price and you need to be on board with that. Uh, we are uh, beta testing NinjaTrader 8 version right now. So uh, hopefully by um, May, we'll, have, uh, we'll be ready to launch our NinjaTrader 8 version. So right now we are uh, in the process of beta testing. If there's anyone here who would like to help with beta testing, please let me know. We are looking for more beta testers. Uh, in order to test NinjaTrader 8 version of our software. So if you're interested, send us an email to support at HawkeyeTraders.com, support at HawkeyeTraders.com, and we'll be glad to uh, qualify you as uh, NinjaTrader 8 beta testers. Thank you very much. All right, other questions then? Um, Marcel, uh, let's look at the uh, the Euro US dollar. Okay, be glad to do that. The Euro US dollar, we're looking at a 5, 15, 30, or we could look at a 15, 30, 60. I like looking at three specific time frames because three time frames helps us to see that. The uh, 45 minute looks at a 15 minute chart. So if I were to expand this down and only look at the 15 minute, then looking at the 15 minute time frame of the euro, we see the euro is a, in a trend of weakness. 
The US dollar is also in a trend of weakness, although the dollar is stronger than the euro right now. They're both trending in the same direction, so the, the overall price direction of that um, right now is not going to be decidedly strong. Okay, the, the weakness in the US dollar will give uh, strength to the euro, but the euro is not trending with strength right now. So right now we are definitely seeing sideways price action for the, the previous time that we had seen. Okay, so since um, the open of the morning, then we can see price has rallied and has come into against again another support region since uh, yesterday's close. So, um, looking at the price right now, it's still stabilizing and congested. There's no real clear direction, although volume is starting to show that we are under accumulation and distribution right now. So, we do have volume peak and a volume peak, and we have divergence where we have price at a higher high, but volume at a lower high. So that divergence then will show you that there's weakness in this trend and we are looking for potential correction on that. But right now there's still no clear evidence of buyers coming into this. And even when the buyers do come in, we really don't see price advancing and we are in a structure downtrend on the 15 minute. So right now it just looks weak for the euro, your US dollar. The Euro Aussie, on the other hand, if you see a weakness in the Euro and a strength of the Australian dollar, 15, 30, 60 minutes, then you're going to be seeing some similar uh, price. Was that Euro Aussie instead of Euro US dollar? Huh? Yeah, it looks like it was. Okay, sorry. All right, that was all analysis of the Euro Aussie. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. With the strength of the Australian and the weakness of the Euro, that's why we'd saw the uptrends. But let's let's look at the Euro US dollar. Sorry about that. There it is. That makes a lot more sense. How trending in the same direction, they would still be congested. Looking at the price action, uh, yesterday's rally up into this morning, uh, open opening market still showed sideways action opening market right here boom sideways price action and sideways price action probably still waiting for that uh, snap election that's coming out um, in the in Brit Great Britain but the uh, you can see the euro is still affected by that but right now the um, downtrend is stronger because the US dollar is still stronger than the euro but they're both trending the same direction Marcel, if trading Forex, how often do you check the opening every four hours at the beginning of the session? Um, you, you just the it's the opening price of every price bar, so you, we check it every single price bar period for to looking at that. So it's not based upon just the open of an, a session market. It's based upon the opening price of any one particular price bar. So we do all the analysis, but we, we do it on every everyone so if you're looking at hourly chart you're looking at hourly price bars 15 minute charts 15 minute price bars and so forth mm -hmm. the Aussie which is the uh, carry trade it's always a always a good one to look at Aussie yen has been extremely weak, and I was looking at this on the longer time frame. If you're looking at the Aussie yen longer time frame, then you can see it has, it has been uh, continuing a downtrend. We've been watching this for several weeks now because um, we can see that on the uh, 720, uh, the weakness of the Australian dollar and then the weakness of the yen, the yen has been overbought, but then it's starting to come in. It's double topping on an overbought and starting to trend down. Here it is also trending down. So weakness of the yen is bullish for Australian dollar, but the Australian dollar weakness also, you know, it's extremely weak here. And you can see that it is trending, never quite made it to overbought, and it's trending down also. 
it's still stronger than the yen, but the weakness of the yen and the weakness of the Australian dollar here on the longer term is showing that there's uh, starting to consolidate. So it looks like we might have found a bottom here and we might be um, consolidating into this longer term trend. So based upon a daily chart, one, two, three, four, five, we double bottomed. And if we see a break of 83 to the long side, this will be a, a, a shift in direction. And that's what we're looking for right here. So if that occurs, then we're looking for price to break 83 in order to get us back into a potential long side. So you can see right there, the Hawkeye stops are at 83. 83 is at the high of the previous structure. And if we break that, then we've broken the structure downtrend as well. Hawkeye will probably give an initial signal long on the 360, but will not follow through unless we see clear buying volume continuing on. What are the squiggly lines on the left side, Ron asked him. Those are the Hawkeye Fat Boy. The Fat Boy is our currency strength meter. All right. It is the uh, the strongest strength meter in the market right now. Everyone tries to copy it, but we were originally the producers of the Fat Man. The Fat Man shows you the individual strength of each individual currency. Right here, we see that the pound is extremely strong on a 720-minute chart, which is half day. The pound is also extremely strong on a daily chart. So relative to all of the other currencies, the pound is strong relative on this time frame to all the other currencies, the Canadian and the US dollar are both weak. So seeing a trend of strength shows the longer term bias towards strength in these markets and weakness in these other markets here. You can also see the Canadian weakness is, is still evident there. So strength of the pound versus the Canadian or the Euro strength. Okay, the Euro is starting to show longer term strength coming out of here. So a longer term bias towards Euro strength is also being shown here. Okay. Relative to the US dollar, yes. Relative to the Japanese yen, absolutely. So a Euro yen, okay, long setup is, uh, looks like it's very nice. So that's what the fat man shows you, even on a shorter time frame, or if you're looking at intraday moves, you're, you see the same strength we, and weakness pairs, you can see that on the shorter time frame, the US dollar is showing a trend of weakness versus strength of the New Zealand or possible turning of over oversold and a, a potential turn of strength in the yen. So those are showing that. And you can see right now there's a, a definite trend of strength in Australian dollar. So the fat man shows you that relative strength and who is the strongest or weakest pair. So it shows you which ones to avoid and which ones that are setting up for really potentially good trades right now. For those of you who purchased the uh, special that we have today, then you will have access also to upgrades within the membership area. Within the membership area, you will also be able to find the Hawkeye Fat Man as an upgrade. We currently sell it for uh, $500, 500, I think $40 in our store, but an upgrade price uh, for members only is 297 bucks. So um, big uh, discounts for um, upgrade for members. And you become a member by uh, a purchasing software. And the best way to become a member is by taking advantage of this uh, uh, volume starter package this morning then you get access to all that. Absolutely. It's about 10 o'clock. Is there any news coming out at 10 o'clock today? Let me check. I like to, uh, Forex Factory is a pretty good source to look on that. Uh, no, no news. Uh, always Wednesdays, we got crude oil inventories coming out at 1030. But other than that, there's really no no strong news. Uh, there's some uh, pretty uh, strong news coming out for the New Zealand dollar this evening prior to the um, the open of the Asian session. But uh, you got some uh, something to look at there. But uh, 10.30s, crude oil inventories. Um, crude oil is traded 
uh, based on the price of the US dollar, so it will impact um, uh, the markets. They're looking for a reduction in inventories. However, the uh, last week's reduction was much greater than expected, but we're still they're still looking at a reduction. And so we've got prices, $53 range, um, that might uh, already be priced in, but we'll just see. We'll see because we don't we don't trade the news per se. We just trade the price action of our charts relative to that news. Uh, the training on Thursday and today's training are all recorded. So if you do uh, purchase into Hawkeye, you get access to all of our previous uh, Thursday training as well. Absolutely. It's all in the membership area. Longer term, what is the longer term trend of this market? Well, you can see right now, if we were to pull up the S&P 500 futures index market right now, you can see a very clear topping pattern. Double top failure, we can see a declining price diverging with an inclining volume. Okay, that's very bearish. Then you see price extensions, all right, you see What's that? A big exhaustion bar, price rallying back off of that, an attempted price failure, followed by aggressive selling. Look at the volume height of the selling. Okay, you can start to see a decline of volume with an increase of price. You see a decrease of price with an increase of volume. All right, that's that's all the divergence we we're trying to tell you about we're starting to see a lot of weakness in this. Now we see lower highs, lower lows. We see a structure channel patterning looking like it's down. Now, if we cannot break this new channel low or this new channel high, then we are in for a considerable amount of congestion at this point. So right now we are definitely in a downtrend and we are looking like a potential for a pause in this market on the weekly chart we can see we had just entered into congestion you can see that the multiple pivot high pivot low shows us that we are going into congestion as well but on the monthly chart you can see we are still in a very strong uptrend we have a potential as you can see this bar right here on the monthly chart, you can see that that's a little little Mr. Sneaky, a little uh, doji bar painting on the very top there. That's a potential isolated high. You can see that the market uh, tends to reverse itself when you see these types of signals. Anywhere from one, uh, three to five price bars. The last time we saw that, you can see that little pivot high painted right there, that yellow bar. Price went down three bars before it started to come back and rally. So we are looking for at least a three to five bar price correction from this little um, isolated high if it closes the end of this month uh, at, at or lower prices of where we are right now. And based upon our current price action from the daily and weekly, we can see selling pressure and selling pressure on both the daily and the weekly. But we need to break this structure low and get a newer low in order to keep this trend. Otherwise, we're just going to stay in this congested mode for the short term. That's what volume and that's what Hawkeye is telling you right now on these charts. That's on the S&P. If you're looking at gold, the gold market, um, on the other hand, is showing some really strong signs. If you're looking at a daily trend of gold, the fat boy is showing us that the gold is extremely strong is building with strength even as the other markets are weakening the Nasdaq the S&P the YM the mid cap while crude oil is extremely strong it's showing signs of being overbought and starting to come out the gold gold on the other hand is starting to uh, show extreme signs of strength and we can see that on the price action where we've gone into a trend of strength a very brief and uh, short pullback but pullback based upon the weekly okay the pullback on this weekly was just simply a pause. But then you've got a continuation and a breakout now into a new highs. And so you can see a new trend. Okay, a new trend up on the daily, continuation trend on the weekly, and we are still congested but waiting to break on the monthly. So right now gold is still strong 
to the long side but congested on the monthly trending and trending on the weekly and the daily crude oil today um, we've got uh, news coming out here just a little bit but looking at this we are trading back up into a con prior congestion region a prior zone you can see that we are in a daily uptrend we are currently entering into a pause but it's not quite congestion entrance yet we are definitely congested on a weekly chart and we are definitely congested on a monthly chart so this daily overbought looks like it's starting to show signs of weakness we might be coming into some weakness depending upon the news that we get out today but the, based upon that then we'll see uh, this continuation is just a, the first pullback on a new trend or not based upon the daily chart we can see that volume had shown us ahead of time where it wanted to go and so based upon the buying action coming in and the failed selling that followed that price was going to rally and a break of our pivots gave us a clear indication that price was going to rally for the next foreseeable future and that gave us a clear direction to trade all of our intraday charts so if you're trading intraday charts and time frames then you base that on your analysis of the longer time frames I hope all of this makes sense um, our tools are put together in such a way that helps you to see and to put yourself in a position where you are in the highest probability and lowest risk opportunity afforded okay that's the idea behind it we're trying to help you to see understand and apply volume principles to your trading so that you can start to get onto the road of consistent profitability all right it is a little bit after 10 yeah we got about 20 minutes before that news comes up we don't, we don't have to worry about that though so intraday gold looks like uh, the uh, gold market uh, is starting to sell off considerably this morning uh, what did Hawkeye tell you ahead of time prior to this market open absolutely look at price rallying up into the open okay here is where gold market opened price rallied up into the open and you can see a pivot high volume surge with an immediate sell-off then you can see accumulation distribution what started happening with the color of the volume at this point weakness okay a rally attempt and let me pull that up and make sure you can see that really good a rally attempt with non no demand volume white volume is no demand showing that buyers really aren't in this market okay so sellers are in control of this market already you can see from the from the ex exhaustion bar the pivot high price coming back off strong they were trying to trap sellers buyers in that market and then it came off strong now you can see sellers coming in strong coming in strong and then boom right there strong close red trend dot showing that there's the initiation of a trend at this point right there Hawkeye at this point then gave a double dot roadkill signal meaning that the second time frame and third time frame volume and direction have both come in so you can see that this second time frame chart the six minute which is shown right here on my three minute chart and the 12 minute which is showing a very strong downward bias anyway show that this was just clear, clearly a corrective move and we we're resuming the current direction so coming into that that gave us a clear entry signal at this point right there with a clear double dot prior one see it was three six nine twelve fifteen thirty almost 45 mm, half an hour or so prior to the big move in price so somebody knew something somewhere and they were setting retail traders up uh, for uh, a, a, a face shaving <laughs> all right so um Hawkeye can see that and where did price go right smack dab into prior support right into a demand region where price had already settled previously it's stabilizing so you got a wide bar so watch out do not enter a bar immediately following a wide bar that's our Hawkeye rule and we apply that to the chart to see that ahead of time 
All right. Um, Tommy wants me to repeat the part about the pivot. All right. Um, the pivot, the Hawkeye pivot, okay, shows isolated highs and isolated lows in the market. And I think I was over on the longer time frame. And I forget if we were on gold or not, but we were looking at the direction of price. Whenever you see a pivot, expect to see three to five price bars following through. These are low, isolated highs or isolated lows. And so whenever you see these painted, then you're looking for price to reverse direction from those three to five price bars or more. Sometimes they can be less, but when you start to see them clustered together, like you see right here or right here, then you know that you're in regions of consolidation or refer to that as congestion. And so you don't really want to paint. You don't really want to trade in an area where pivots are painted on both the tops and the bottoms in the area. You want to see them trending lows or trending highs to show you that you're in a clear directional trade. All right, Richard, uh, does the Hawkeye trading system work on candlesticks? Absolutely. Let me turn that on for you. I just uh, prefer price bars, but you can click that onto candlesticks and you can see it exactly the same way. So if you're a candlestick trader, by all means, you can definitely see any, any of the tools um, on that. So there's no limitation exactly on how you want to paint those. Use them any way that you want. Marcel, can I look at the uh, dollar yen? Absolutely. I'll just type it in. All right, uh, looking at a 15.36, we can see a clear rally of the dollar yen. The dollar yen, the, the yen itself on a 45 minute chart is showing some weakness, but you can also see that the dollar is extremely strong and is also coming down in weakness. So the weakness in the dollar looks like it's uh, it's been good for the, uh, the yen. The yen is starting to show some signs of strength. If we look back more at a 30 minute time frame, then we can see we are already seeing a trend of strength coming from the yen. Uh, but the weakness in the US dollar is also starting to turn. So I would def definitely be careful because the dollar is still stronger than the yen. Looking at a 60 minute time frame, you can still see a trend of strength versus weakness on this. So this is a, it's not a good setup. And so right now you're still looking at that uh, sideways and, and trading. Uh, but the, um, the uh, yen definitely looks like it's starting to show a, a change of direction. Got a lot of buying volume coming into this, so looking like a very good surge. This looks extremely uh, bullish because you, anytime you see prices trending up and an increase in volume, consolidation, and then you see price trending up with an increase of volume, and then you see consolidation and you see price trending up with an increase of volume, then that's always going to show that the bullish intent is long in this market. And you can see that on the 15 minute, where you can see now we are in a continuation trend on the 30 minute where we've just come out of pause, come out of pause. So we're in a confirmed trend run and on the 60 minute where we are still in a confirmed trend run on increasing buying volume. So definitely watch into that. We are coming into a double top. So be careful of a double top. And if I were to pull my zones on at this point, then you can see at this point we do have overhead resistance where the dollar yen is starting to come too, but that's not until uh, 109, 200. So we've got about another uh, five, uh, five or uh, so pips to go before it tops out. Prior sellers had, had previously been uh, coming in at that point, so watch out for that uh, potential double top. Um, longer term, you can see if we break 109.390, then we'll be looking at a 109.6 and even a 110.50 uh, for upside because it looks like the downtrend has been broken and we are looking at a consolidation right here. So if this breaks this high, we will be in a new structure high, so we'll be looking at a higher high and a higher low formation. So that's what we're looking for, is for this to continue and to even break, uh, to push 
push this back up into a new continuation. Longer term, if I were to go uh, to a uh, 120, then the 120 is still showing this is a, a bearish trend. The strength of the dollar versus the weakness of the yen shows the longer term, this is just a corrective rally. But we'll, we'll just have to see if we start to see that the shorter term weakness in the dollar or the shorter term strength of the yen does come back around. But if we were to pull that into a 360, they can see the 360 also, the dollar is not strong relative to the 360. Whereas the, the weakness of the Japanese yen has some potential to, to return. So there is a potential in the 360. A 720 is a half day. Weak yen. Very weak dollar. So the yen is still strong relative to the dollar. So I don't see that uh, point giving you any long-term bullishness based upon that. And then daily, 1440. Then you can see based upon the 1440. The yen, right here, coming from extreme strength, starting to show weakness, and then the dollar is relatively weak compared to that. So overall, you're still looking at um, the strength of the yen still driving this, but the shorter term is showing that the weakness is not strong enough to um, overcome that. So then I would look for this to be a short-term corrective move, uh, but we, it still looks uh, short-term promising, long-term not so much. So shorter term, this does look like a potential, a potential um, rally of the um, uh, yen, but the uh, U.S. dollar has to continue in weakness in order for us to start seeing this reverse and start to turn back down. This could be an ideal spot to do that with this double top fails. That's what we'd be looking for. Three, six, and 12, three minute, six minute, and a 12 minute. Three, six, and 12 minute. Um, you can see the three minute is a really nice trend. Uh, it looks like it is correcting itself. Prior resistance becomes current support, so continue to watch that. We did break prior highs on the six minute as well. Volume is not supporting this. And right now we're not seeing volume really supporting this either. The 12 minute, we have strong volume trends. So price action with strong volume, that looks good. And uh, longer term volume also is expanding, which looks good. Shorter term, each one of these are starting to build, but the longer term doesn't look as strong. Uh, but it's still in a, in a trend. So um, if you've got signals to, to go long on this, then uh, this trend is starting to support that, but the, the chart itself doesn't. With this weakness, it needs to turn and continue to be weak, and this dollar still needs to continue to turn back up. I like this. This looks good. This looks good. So if this turns right back up and goes in strength, then we have a potential for this to continue if this stays weak. But if this starts turning and this continues down, then um, I would be looking for reversals short-term reversals and a, a possible short trade on the uh, dollar yen. Yeah, that six minute volume is extremely weak and does not point to a uh, continuation. Reg, is there a long signal on the NASDAQ at 54.20? Let me see. Let's look at the NASDAQ. All right, uh, 54.20. Is there a long signal? Absolutely not. We do have very weak volume coming in, but there's no long signal here. I can see price coming up. Looks like it is a, a wide bar with low volume, low relative volume. I don't see a lot of, uh, of continuation on that. Let me see what this longer time frame looks like. We're coming up into a top supply zone. Okay, 
So demand, no. Supply, yes. This could be a potential rally up into supply. We typically see price reversing back down. So whenever you see these wide bars, like this right here, never take an initial trade immediately following a wide bar because the wide bar is there for a reason. It shows you that price is larger than normal and typically reverses back down into the body of the wide bar. So that's usually what occurs. Now, if this were rallying back down, you would see buying volume starting to come in and we don't see that yet. Second time frame and third time frame volume still declining and no demand, declining, no demand. So we still don't see any clear reg reason to get in. If you're getting in at this level, you're just you're getting in not based upon volume. You're just getting in based upon price only. That's the lowest probability entry. If you want to get the highest probability with the lowest risk, then as long as volume is on your side in the direction of the trade, then you're going to be doing well. I hope that, that helped. Sorry, did I say something funny, Reg? <laughs> That's okay. Steven, hey. Uh, all right, welcome aboard. I see you're a proud owner of the Hawkeye Total Package. Welcome aboard. Uh, with regards to brokers, will the tools function provided the platform has enough historical data for all your currency pairs? Absolutely. Um, if you're looking at MT4, let me pull that up for you real quick. And then you're looking at the total package. Depending upon your broker, all MT4 brokers are not the same. So um, you need to um, research your broker and see if they do have all the currency pairs required to, in order to support that. Most of the weaknesses on current brokers come from the New Zealand pair or the Swiss pair. So make sure that the New Zealand Swiss or some, most of the New Zealand pairs that are there are currently provided. And sometimes if they don't provide those, just ask them. And they usually have them. They just don't provide them. So I would usually ask them to do that. So um, apply that to your chart. And uh, then you shouldn't have any problem with any of your um, fat man pairs at all. Uh, Ron wanted to know what the white volume shows. Anytime you see white volume, that is a sign of no demand. No demand volume, OK? Is, a, is an indication that there's buying and selling are essentially equal weighted, that there's an equal number of buyers, there's an equal number of sellers, and that the distribution of volume um, is, um, there's no real clear demand for, for buyers in that market or sellers for that matter. So if we go back to our chart where we look at the, the distribution, you can see on this example, the close was in the lower third of the price bar and the distribution of volume was heavily weighted in the lower part of that price bar. So the volume bar is color coded red. However, if the close was somewhere in the middle part, very close to the open, and if the distribution of this volume was more heavily weighted towards the middle part of that price bar, that shows there's no real clear intent of either buying or selling going on. And so we show that as a no demand bar. We also look at the range of the price bar as well. So all that's taken into account when we color code that. So when you see white, that indicates there's no demand. There's really no clear direction that price wants to go based on that. And it usually is indicative of congestion or um, sideways price action. So let's see, what else are we looking at here? We're coming pretty close to the uh, end of our trading session today. We're also coming very close to the uh, uh, the news announcement in crude oil, but uh, we can kind of look at that real quick and see. While I've got MT4 up, uh, was there any specific question I wanted to show? I think, Stephen, if you have a specific question, I'd be glad to show you or demonstrate something for you. But you should have most of these uh, charts set up 
and ready to go. If you open up a brand new chart, um, pull that back down. Then uh, in order to apply Hawkeye to that chart, just simply right click and use one of the provided templates that are there. You can pull in the templates based upon the uh, just straight volume alone. Uh, you can pull in the template, any of the templates uh, where this is the one I've got set up with my two roadkill. So it automatically loads the roadkill onto the chart and pre-formats those. Now this is a daily chart, but if I were to pull this down as a five minute, then I've got to make sure that my roadkill is also set up. In this case, it's going to be three times the current time frame. So this is a 15 minute, and then this one would be probably a 30 minute, but we'll see. Yep, six times, so six times five is 30. So this one I have set up as a three times and six times, so I'm looking at a five, 15, 30 minute, already pre-configured, ready to go. So pretty much a one click, boom, you're ready to go and apply. So hope that helps. How do I get in and out of the profiles? Um, on the on the chart itself, under File, there's a Profiles menu, and you can go in and out of them this way. Or you can see that on the charts themselves, on the bottom, if you press the F11 key, F11 hides and then shows the uh, the window of MetaTrader 4. Right here on the bottom center, you can see a profile list as well. So I can switch back and forth between all of my profiles very quickly that way. <laughs> Reg, yes, that's right. Um, uh, the question, he, he basically made a statement, says we basically have a mini volume profile hidden within each price bar. And that is a true statement. We are actually looking at the whole volume profile and we're doing the, the complete analysis on every price bar to show you that. We're, we're doing all the hard work, but we're making it easy for you as a trader just to refer to the volume, look at the color profile and understand buying activity, selling activity, and where you should be positioned with regards to that. So that's absolutely true. Richard, would it be confusing in using so many indicators, especially the volume indicators on one chart? Um, I, I don't think it is at all. As a matter of fact, I see a lot of strength in this because you see there's a whole bunch here, but I refer to this to show me which pair to trade. Once I know which pair to trade, I have all of my indicators on a single chart. I can look at the single chart and trade off of this one with confidence because I have second and third time frames showing me signals of entry, potential entry points, re-entry points, and volume and trend associated with the longer time frames. If I ever want to look at the six ways the market moves to understand what mode the market I'm in, then I can always pull up my other charts and see what the longer time frames are telling me and how much strength I have coming into it versus weakness coming into these markets, okay? So it's not confusing at all. As a matter of fact, it actually builds confidence in the system itself because you don't have to have all the other indicators, the MACDs, the stochastics, the, the moving averages and so forth to, to confuse you. This gives you a very clear presentation of when do I buy? When do I enter? Why do I enter? And confirmation that volume leads the way and not a lagging indicator. That's the idea behind that. At first, I thought there were quite a few indicators that were there, but it very, very quickly came to uh, realize that um, it painted a picture that made it very easy for me to follow. And, and it's just very clear and easy it's color codes. Uh, helps you to see that um, that picture very clearly. Minimally, if you uh, go to one of the other profiles where you're looking at just volume only, then you can see the same picture just only with volume. And so if you wanted to add to that volume, then other tools, 
then you can clearly uh, do that if you wanted to add moving averages all right to show you specific directional changes uh, from from those if you wanted to put on anything else like a MACD or anything else that you traditionally use then you can still do that and if you can see prior to any of these moving average crossovers that volume is starting to point the way and give you clear direction okay buying coming back in you need to see a crossover before you can actually start taking any types of longs you see your structured trends changing those are all things which indicate to you that volume is showing you the way and you need to be prepared to, to trade that way so you still need other indications to help you to know when to get in but uh, volume really is the key so when you see those signals coupled with the trend changes then volume coupled with the uh, trend tools the trend dot shows you when to take the trade the stops show you the amount of risk that you have in any part of the trade and the momentum tool shows you this actual strength of the trend. So coupling that together gives you a very clear yes, no answer. I'm in or I'm not in. It's definitive and it can be back tested and automated as well. That's the nice thing about it. You're welcome. RJ, you have the, uh, the basic volume package. Good. Let's see, the medium package price. Well, if you go over to Hawkeye Trader's website, let me pull that up for you real quick. HawkeyeTraders.com, www.HawkeyeTraders.com. Then if you go into the store menu, right, then you can see the basic prices. These are the price for the, st the starter package. That's the special I gave you this morning. Normally it's 360 but you can start with 97 bucks. And then you have the standard package and the professional package. Now, if you already purchased the starter package, then we do have a special upgrade price that gets you into the standard package, which is normally $9.97. But let me see if I can't get that, that link up here. Here it is. It's called upgrade. Copy. Let me paste that into the chat window for you. Upgrade and... RJ, right there, there, and then I'll show you that right here. Open a new window, we'll paste that and go, upgrade. Then it takes you to this. If you have already purchased, then uh, even though you bought it for 97 bucks, we're giving you full $360 credit as if you had purchased it right off of our store. And if that were the case, if you upgrade, then instead of paying $9.97, you'll get a $6.37 price to upgrade. Or if you wanted to go straight to the professional package, we still give you that same $360 discount off of the professional package. So not only do you have the, the volume tools or the expanded tools, but you get all of our professional grade tools included as well. Now, if you're a total package, then if you look underneath the buy now for the MT4 total package, you'll find that it's priced a little bit less. It's 11.37 instead of 16 because um, all the tools are not included on the MT4 total package because um, the MT4 total package doesn't have the tick tools, uh, doesn't have the fat boy or the kiss, uh, and it does not have the tool set. So there are a lot of tools that are not included. That's why it's so much um, less expensive. And if you were to purchase the um, the tools directly from the Hawkeye store, um, you would see the exact same thing. So I hope that helps, RJ. If you're looking at upgrading, that's the link that you want to use. You're very welcome. And if you do have the zones, that it directly applies to that. And all the tools apply to forex trading just as they do in futures so the standard package or the professional package apply to all the forex markets equally so either one these are the the best value packages if you were to purchase the individual indicators if you go back to the the store itself you can purchase the individual indicators themselves and kind of piece together a kit that works for you but you'll see um after a little bit of of, of adding these up that 
it starts to exceed these prices considerably if you're looking at comparison. So we tried to bundle these as packages so that you can just get things with a single download and a single install. If you buy them separately, you have multiple downloads and multiple installs, and it just makes things a little more clunky. But uh, we, we have put them together in these packages to help you. So uh, whether you're a Forex trader or a futures trader, either of these packages would suit you uh, perfectly well. Uh, Richard wanted to know if the indicators repaint. Uh, the indicators do not repaint. Once you see, once the data is set, these indicators will be rock solid. The only way you'll see a change is if the data underlying data itself changes. But if the data never changes, the indicators will not change. They do not repaint. You're welcome. Philip, crude oil finally hit their forecast correctly. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no shocker there, huh? But, uh, but thanks for the update. So, uh, no, uh, no action in crude oil. So let's see what's the crude oil market doing right now. Yeah, news, big wide bar. Trade the wide bar anytime it comes out. Anyway, you're stuck between two zones. Watch for the uh, break of the low or the high of the three minute wide bar. We're waiting three to five price bars following the news announcement. You do not trade the wide bar. Wait, patience is always a virtue and then trade the resulting trend. Once you get a signal and a trend within or outside of that wide bar, that's the trend that you wanna take. Exactly. And again, longer term, crude oil, we are topping. We can see that there is room for correction, and we can see that the overall direction of this trade is to weakness. The volume is showing that we are we are weak, and we're starting to come in with no demand. So if this news isn't wasn't as expected, it did decrease, but maybe it was already priced in, and we probably are looking for potential correction down to about a $51 range again, 52 to $51 range. What are the zones on the daily? The zones on the daily are showing us that we have about a 51.31 target to the downside. Overall price bouncing off of this, giving us the highest probability reversal point. So looking at that trade back down, we're looking at about 51.31 as a downside target just for correction. And that's still keeping it in an uptrend. Absolutely. I love the zones. They're a value, valuable tool, and I just love, love trading with them. You're welcome, RJ, and welcome aboard again. Uh, Ron, with the volume package, is it possible to be able to trade effectively? If so, could you demo it? Um, by itself, uh, the volume package probably would be very difficult to trade. Um, although if you had other tools like uh, trend lines, you know, you can obviously see that based upon trends, if you connect your pivot points, okay, you can see definite channels of price. And when you start to see a break of that channel with supporting volume, that does give you a clear indication that you can potentially go long. In addition to that, you can, you can, like I said, you can put on a MACD or moving averages to see that. But if you go into the membership area, where you downloaded volume, I have some videos there that show you exactly how to use volume uh, on your platform. So go in and see the videos in the members area. Let me see if I can log in real quick to that and show you where those are located. I'm doing that right now. So here we go. If you go over to the membership area and log in, then if you go under products, uh, you should have the volume module as the only one that you have listed. If you just purchase the starter package, then that's all you'll have on the list. So if you go under the volume module, then you'll see that there are several videos here. And these are just different times that they've been done. But these are different two-hour videos where you can go through and observe exactly how to use that volume module to trade with. 
with not using any of the other tools. Okay? So I'd uh, recommend that you go through and, and view those and apply that. You're welcome, Ron. But by itself, because of the nature of volume, you can see volume changes quite a bit. So just volume all by itself would be very difficult to trade. That's why we couple it with our other tools, which have all been built upon volume, and they're, they're unified so that they all work together. Because we understand that the volume strength precedes price, and then understanding that, we look at price relative strength. We look at uh, momentum. We also look at uh, pattern recognition and standard deviation of price. So they all couple together and play a very important role. And together, Hawkeye gives signals where those are clearly defined entries, where we have clearly defined risk, and where we manage our trades based upon probabilities and risk. And if you, if you understand that as a principle, that you're not trading price, you're not trading anything else, but if you are trading probabilities and you're managing risk, then everything else comes together. The the profits and the money, it just seems to come naturally. But if you're managing your risk and trading against the highest probability, then you're going to do well. You'll do quite well, actually. All right, Stephen. If I set up profiles um, opened up and want to load the templates of a new chart, do you close off all the profiles? No, it'll automatically close itself. You don't have to worry about closing all the other profiles. It'll just automatically do that itself. Yeah, don't close the profiles. Um, when you're working with profiles, all you do is just click the profile and go to the very next one on the list. So if you're looking at any profile at all, then it'll automatically just load it up and just pre go from one to the other just like that. You don't have to worry about going up and closing them or anything else. Just simply just go from one profile to the next. You're very welcome. Marcel, the volume on the dollar yen, 3, 6, and 12 is red. Okay. Let me see. 3, 6, and 12. Do I have a 3, 6, and 12 on here? I don't think I do. I can make it, though. No, this is MT4. And let me see, where's the yen? There it is. Three, six, and 12. Uh, volume, volume is red, volume is red, volume is red. So if I were to trade that on a time frame, three, six, and 12, absolutely. You've got dark heat map, you've got red volume, and you've got red volume. So everything on this should be indicating that you have a, a, a nice short signal. If I were to pull that up on a chart that has them all in one place, like this one right here, and if I were to pull up the, the dollar yen, there you go, see that? See how the signal identifies the conditions are, are met for a, an initial entry? It just looks at it for you, and you don't have to have them all up, and you can easily see those, but this does give you that, that configuration. So if you're looking at this as a potential trade, then you take that. You can establish the risk in the trade either using the Hawkeye stops or using the level rules, and the Hawkeye levels show you the average true range profit targets using one, two, or three levels as your potential profit target based upon the amount of risk that you have set up in that trade. Oops. Okay, so perfect. So if it were bearish, what target would you take? Well, as a minimum, you're looking at trying to, to get to a 108 range. So 108, 9, 12. So you're looking at about 10 to 15 pips as an initial target. Right here, you're looking at the same level. Okay on the downside. You could easily trade to the middle of this zone. The middle of that zone is about, uh, it is 108.9 even. So you're looking at price coming right back down to that same level right there is the downside. 
looks like about two ATRs from the current price for about uh, 12 to 15 pips from the current price. Steve, uh, if you're going to add one other Hawkeye indicator to volume, what would you suggest? What would I suggest? Well, um, the obvious tool would be the trend. That's the most logical tool to add to volume. Uh, the trend module gives you the trend and stops and the heat map. So together with volume and trend, that gives you the ability to take and uh, identify trade entries on multiple time frames. So the trend module would be the next logical one. However, you'll probably find that, let me pull this up here. Uh, I don't have that, so let me go back to the Hawkeye's website here. You'll probably find that the trend module, if you were to add that, is uh, 750 bucks. Um, it's more than the out upgrade price you get as a member. Uh, where is that at? Yeah, see, six thirty seven. So you could upgrade to the standard package. You would get the full trend package. See, here's the trend module. You'd also get, in addition to that, the levels module, which by itself, um, where is that? Uh, levels. There it is. It's 360 bucks. So you're basically going to do a lot better by upgrading to the standard package at the uh, special price since you already have the volume right there. Then you would you would get uh, uh, you'd get access to the advanced training course right here. You get all the bonus indicators plus the levels in addition to the full trend module. And of course you already have the starter package. So that's actually a much better value if you were to take advantage of that. So if, and the standard package is the minimum tool set needed in order to follow our three-step entry exit method. So if you're in the membership area right there, then if you go under the resources, then you'll see that uh, the three-step entry exit method is right there available and the standard package is the minimum required package in order to fully follow our three-step method. You can do the six ways with just volume, but uh, you need to uh, put some uh, changes to it to help, kind of help you. But the three-step method uh, clearly follows that. And of course, all the uh, mentoring videos are here. The Thursday members only training videos are here and all of our Wednesday sessions are, are all here as well, in addition to the other um, videos that are available to give you explanations of that. I hope that helps. Um, Trade Station um, is for rent only. Um, I don't think they allow you to buy it, but they have a very special promotion going on right now. Yeah, uh, our trade station representative, his name is Corey, I believe, Corey Andrews. And uh, candrews at tradestation.com. Let him know you came from Hawkeye. He'll give you a very special offer. He can get you set up for actually no cost. No cost rental if you set up an account with them. So that's a, that's a good start if you're looking at uh, looking into that. But you do have to, I think, set up an initial account. TradeStation doesn't allow you to trade Forex. That's the only problem. You get Forex data. You can do all the analysis. But um, they don't have any active trading for Forex. So if you are looking at trading Forex, then um, you might not want to. If, if that's all you trade, then uh, you might not want to go with TradeStation. But they're excellent for um, doing the analysis. MT4, uh, Ninja Trader are both the uh, platforms that you can use to uh, trade the forex markets, but not uh, not TradeStation. They're excellent for futures. They're excellent for stock and equities and options trading. TradeStation, you can trade all of those 
directly. Same with Ninja Trader, but you cannot trade options on Ninja Trader. And in order to trade stocks, you have to trade with uh, other supported uh, brokers um, because they, you can't set up a direct brokerage um, to trade stocks. But and you can't trade options. Uh, you can't also you can't trade options on MT4 either. But that's why I like uh, TradeStation because it allows you to trade trade all those, with the exception of Forex. Uh, yep, okay, I'm going to have to start winding down right now, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording at this point.